City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and so spin and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Good morning and welcome to another project. So this time I'm going to be making a pair of pants um, and it is going to be this simplicity pattern here. Okay, now it comes in two lengths, more of a cropped, almost gaucho culotte kind of thing, and then a full length. I'm gonna do the full length version. And the fabric that I'm going to be using, I actually got in the flat fold home deck aisle a while back, but it doesn't feel like a home deck. It's probably a polyester. I didn't keep the, the content label but it's extremely soft and it's pretty thin okay one side looks lighter in color and you can kind of see the woven lines on there the other side is much darker and shinier i'm thinking that the darker shinier is supposed to be the right side but i'm going to make this lighter colored a very soft side my visible side i would say um, just because i think that it's less, when it, it's really shiny, I'm thinking that that's gonna make it more formal. And you know, nothing is formal around here. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started cutting it out. Now, I think I have extra fabric because this is, you know, a big piece here. So if I have extra, you know, and that's a big if, I don't think I have enough for the little jacket, but I do for the little, little top. And so, um, We'll see if I get that cut out, I'll add that to it and we'll try the little top on too because you can never have too many little little tops to layer under things. So um, one thing I know I'm going to have to do is extend because I have a very high waist and round buttocks. So I need to extend um, the space. There's always a length and shorten hairline above the crotch. I always need to space that up. And because this is a high-waisted pants, you know, that's going to make it even more important. And my legs are shorter than their standard, so I'm going to have to shorten those. So all kinds of things like that. First, I'm just going to go ahead and open up my pattern, get the pieces out, and see what they look like. Okay, so first thing, they changed their paper. This is a new kind of paper. You know, they're usually like that really cheapy... Um, new stock kind of stuff and this is a little slicker so that's interesting but look i'm guessing this is the new trend where instead of listing the instructions they just give you a scan thing and say go watch a video on how to understitch on how to slip stitch on how to top stitch so they're not actually giving you instructions if you're new to sewing i would recommend you get a very basic sewing book that just has all of that information in it you know there's all different kinds there's the singers there's the, there's everything I think there's about every major company you know out there there's used ones everywhere that have how to do all of these basic things just get a, a good textbook that you can you know refer back to because you never know with videos they pop on and off the internet like crazy so anyhow um, what I need to do is go ahead and get my pieces cut out and you can see that these are extremely wide pants you know which i love because i have extremely wide legs um, lots of pleats and everything it reminds me of something from the 80s if they were tapered you know do you remember that where they were really big at the top and then tapered at the bottom or maybe that's just me so i'm doing version a which has a lot of pieces so i'm going to go ahead and get those cut out well these pants have a little bit of everything we have the full full size back pockets. 
we have welts we have welted pockets we have full fly we've got everything these are more like a real trouser than a you know casual pant kind of thing um, but I wanted to show you on the pattern up here let's see this is the back here this is the front they do not have one of those lengthen and shorten here lines up above the crotch I guess they don't assume anyone could possibly have the dimensions that my body has because yes this is a high waisted but even when I've made high waisted patterns I still need to extend it you know every body is different figure out your body so what I'm going to have to do is draw my own lengthen and shorten here line. And in general, I like to put it like I'm going to be doing my size 16, which is this cut line here. So first I'm going to cut out my pattern to my size 16. And um, since my waist is usually not a big deal it's my hips but since these are so full I'm not going to worry too much about my hips it says here for the hip measurement it is 49 and a half inches wide at my size and that's fine I'm good with that so um, I'm going to go cut out my straight size 16 on everything and then extend it up here and I'll show you that in just a minute okay so I have my pattern cut out here I'm going to start with the back piece and I'm lining it up so that this grain line is going along with the grain line of my grid underneath, okay? So I just throw a weight on there to hold it. Now, I need to extend this part. They mark where the crotch line is, but if I cut at that point and spread it, that's just gonna add space down here in the legs. I need my space to be spread up here, you know, so that this part is longer. Let me raise you up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is draw a line where um, the swoopy part up here is. And I'm gonna make it fairly low, but uh, right about here, which is um, about two and a quarter inches above where my crotch line is, if you're following along. So I'm just going to draw a line straight across right there and cut it straight across. And I'm going to need to get a little piece of tissue paper to use as an insert. So I'm going to run and get that. But what I'm going to do is spread these apart an inch an inch and a quarter. I'm going to go an inch and a quarter. Okay. Put my little piece. You see this? I'm going to put my little piece of tissue paper in here and tape it together. But the main thing is to make sure that this grain line continues um, in the same place up here so I know everything is staying nice and straight. So I've got my little insert piece taped in there. And so now I'm just going to recut my edge cutting lines just kind of smoothing and evening everything out there, okay? So what I need to do now is look at the length while I still have my back piece up here. Now on the pattern, it should have final length. Does it? Does it? It does not. Um, usually it will say length. Well, let me see if it's on the instructions here. Ah, here. They put it on the instructions instead of the envelope. Okay, so width of pants, length of pants, size 16. I'm coming through size 16 all the way down. It doesn't have it. Oh, here. It's way at the bottom. Okay, and it's kind of faded. All right, so I take my size 16 here and I'm coming all the way down. Pants A, which is what I'm doing. They have their finished length, 42 and three quarters, okay? Now I just added one and a quarter. So instead of 42 and three quarters, that's 43. I have a 44 inch if I just leave it as is. So what I'm gonna do is get my little measuring tape and I put a 
clip where 44 inches is, just a clothespin, because it, it'll weight it down. And then hold this up at my side, my waist level at my side, and see where this is going to hit. And that'll give me an idea of where I need my actual finish length to be. Okay, for a nice long pant on me, 39 is where I need it to be. Okay, because I want to go for a nice low pant leg. So that means I have to take out one, two, three, four, five inches from my pant leg. Okay, so on these pieces, they do have down here in the leg section, move my coffee so I don't put my pattern piece in there. Okay, so right here where this double line is, that is the lengthen and shorten here line. Okay, so I'm going to line, once again, the grain line up with my grid, this line here, and I just do that just because it helps me make sure everything stays nice and square. Now, if I'm going to take out five inches, I need to make a fold two and a half inches, okay? And you can do it below or above, I'm just choosing to do it above here, and I'm using my ruler and lining it up so this edge of my ruler is two and a half inches above that, okay? So then I can fold the whole thing over here, get a nice little crease, okay? I'm gonna put my ruler where I can see those lines through it just to help me when I fold it back. Fold it back this way, again, make a nice little crease bit off there. Hang on. Okay, so you can see moving the ruler really helps to get that little crease there. Hold that, and while I'm holding it down, I'm going to put a couple little pieces of tape here to hold it. All right, so that is my new pant length. So when I cut it, I'm just going to blend, you know, come around here and, and blend into there and up here also starting at this corner. Well, I can go ahead and trim it now. Just starting at that corner, blend it down to there. Okay, so this is done. Um, on the front piece, I'm going to do something similar down here. I'll be taking the two and a half inch fold for a five inch difference from the bottom. Um, but I'm going to show you how I do it at the top because we are dealing with a fly and I need to work around that. Okay, so I wanted to show you the front here. I've already made that fold to shorten the legs down here, but I wanted to, to talk through my decisions on the front. When I extend the waistline up higher <clears throat> and I don't shorten my, and I don't lengthen my zipper, that puts my zipper being bumped up higher, which may or may not be a big deal. Um, with a pant this wide, it might not be a big deal, but a lot of times when I do that with my zipper up higher, it makes it more difficult to get on and off over my big hips. So I think instead of just keeping the same size zipper and moving it up, I'm actually going to use a longer zipper. So I think this is nine inch. Yeah, this is a nine inch zipper, you know, which is like a man trouser zippers, I think is a nine inch zipper, I think. And women's are usually seven. So, you know, it's not terribly out of the ordinary. Um, so if I use this one, I can still keep the bottom of my zipper where it needs to be hip wise to be able to pull on but I'll have, you know, extra opening room. So that's what I'm going to do. And I don't have one that matches it exactly, but it's going to be covered in a fly. Yeah, it's like off-white, but you know, we will survive. But what that means is in addition to extending the height on my pants here, I am also going to have to extend my fly facing piece by the same inch and a quarter, you know, and it's just a rectangle at this point, so I can just add it up here, you know, being mindful that it will move the notches, of course. And of the fly, the left fly, I will also have to extend this. So, you know what, just to make sure everything stays where it should, I will probably 
actually insert the inch and a quarter piece in these where it needs to be just so that the notches stay where they're supposed to be, you know? Because why confuse extra things? So what that all means is where I'm going to draw my line coming across is in the crotch, in the zipper area. So my zipper starts here, okay? And so I'm gonna put my extending line right above that, which is right about here. I think, oh, drop my pen. Okay, so here's my pen. And so it's about in half an inch above where the bottom of the zipper mark is on here is where I'm drawing that line. And I cut straight across here and open it up by an inch and a quarter by spreading this and inserting a piece of tissue paper and taping it in place, just like the back, okay? And this piece, you can see the two notches are up here where it would blend like that. I'm going to um, need to extend this because this dot matches up with this dot, okay? So about half an inch above that dot, I'm gonna cut straight across, and I'll spread that and insert a piece also. And same thing here, you can see this matches up at the top. Here's that same dot, so about a half an inch, or where this levels out, I would say, okay? Really anywhere between this notch and that dot, where both sides are straight. You can make your cut straight across and insert the little inch and a quarter of tissue paper, okay? So I'm gonna insert that inch and a quarter here, here, and here, and that will match up with my back piece. All the other pieces I'm pretty sure are just waistband pieces, pocket pieces, welt pieces, and things like that. So we should be good there. All right, so let me go ahead and get all of that done and then get my fabric cut out. Okay, so I had enough fabric to cut out this top. Now, if you're gonna do it, it is completely on the bias and I like those, those really drape nicely. But I'm gonna do a separate video for making the little top you know, just to keep everything separate and everything, but yes, that will be coming. Um, and everything is cut out of the main fabric. And you know, the more I feel this, the more it feels like, almost like a rayon blend. It's that kind of feel, but with texture, you know? But anyway, um, the pocket piece, this pocket piece here, you cut two out of the main fabric and two out of a lining. So I am just reaching into my bag of lining pieces. Um, this feels like another one of my Bimber rayons. I'm gonna iron it to get the wrinkles out and just cut a couple pocket pieces out of this and then we'll be ready to assemble. Hey, welcome back to another day. Ready to get started on these pants. And it looks like the first step they're gonna have us work on is the front piece and our little pieces that we extended that have to do with the fly here. And I need to put interfacing on these. Um, I'm gonna use a lighter weight interfacing. I don't want these to be super stiff. I don't want a fly that's really stiff, but I need it to hold its shape. So I want to put my little piece number two, right fly facing, so it is shaped the same way this is with their curve on this side, okay? And that's the side I'm gonna put the interfacing on. And thankfully, yay, I did it right. Um, the side I'm considering my right side is lighter in color. This is the one I'm considering darker in color. So this is the side I'm putting my interfacing on here. And on this one, it's symmetrical. So, you know, not so much of a panic event there. But I'm gonna go ahead and fuse some lightweight interfacing to both sides of these first before I get started with anything. Okay, I think we have a problem here because, take a look at this, we've got step one, put interfacing on, so that little piece of a seam there, okay? I've got my interfacing on, you can see I kind of surged around the edges just to keep things from fraying. But, we go to step two, the fly is put in, 
And I'm thinking, what in the world? There's a whole lot of steps between this little bit here and the fly is in. It's kind of wild. Um, I was thinking, well, maybe they just got things out of order. So I read ahead. This page ends on page 11. I mean, step 11. So I step over here where it starts on step 12. And the next time I see anything with the fly, it's here, step 18 and 19, and it's in there all the way. So they completely skip all the instructions that have to do with putting a fly into pants. I wonder if they have it in their cute little scan me videos, which I doubt. If they do, that's pretty darn sneaky. So let me tell you what I'm going to do. I have a book that has step-by-step -step instructions on how to put in a fly of this style. And I'm just going to bring that book over here so that you can see the diagrams from that book because if you're a visual learner like I am that's going to come in handy and that way if you're following along even though they don't have pictures in here we're still going to be able to put it together so let me go get my book okay so I got out my book this is the one I'm using you know a lot of different kinds of books are going to have these same instructions this is just the one that I have that I like I think I got it on textbooks.com or ebay or something you know it's fun but I am going to open it up to my page that has instructions for fly front zipper with separate extension. That's what this whole process is called. And I can already see that the little bit of instruction that they had on here is different from my book. And I'm going to go with my book, okay? Now on here they had you interface the entire piece of this one that has the little dimple on the bottom on in my book they have you only interface half of it and I have no fabric left um, I did cut out the camisole so if I need to I can cut into those pieces and not make the camisole but I don't want to so what I did is I just surged two scraps together you know that are both you know on the straight here so that's something and I pressed it kind of flat and I'm just going to cut myself a new one of these left fly front. Hopefully it's not going to be a big deal where this little surged seam is, you know. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and um, only interface half of it. So where I fold this in half, let's see, how wide is that? That is about an inch, maybe an inch and three eighths wide. So I'll put a little strip of interfacing an inch and three eighths um, lining up with the center of that dimple all the way up to the top. So let me get that done first, not surging around this piece because that's another issue. Um, get that interfacing on just half of it and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I want to do is get a line on here where I know the exact center is going to be. So I am just folding it in half. I'm going to press it so I can get that little fold line to use as a guide. Okay. Now I have some interfacing that's just in the long strip. I'm going to go get a piece of that. You can use just regular interfacing as long as you cut it to size. Okay, this is just a piece of black woven interfacing that's, you know, got some little fusible nubs on it. And what I'm going to do is put my Teflon sheet behind here and lay this so it is light right along that fold line there. Okay, and press that on. And since my Teflon's behind it, I can trim off the excess later. Okay, so now that that is set, I can pull it off and I'm just going to trim around it so that it fits nicely. Okay, so now that that is done, I need to turn this right sides together. Okay, and along this bottom edge here, I'm going to put a little seam at a quarter inch seam allowance just along this curved edge right there at the bottom. Okay, so with that done now, I'm going to trim a little bit from this corner. Actually, I'm going to trim down to probably about an eighth of an inch underneath there. Okay, this whole thing I turn right side out at this point. And I'm going to press it in half again so everything lines up nicely this way. 
Okay, so now that I have it like this, or this little piece, what I'm going to do is come along and surge this edge, you know, together. So that's going to hold the two sides together and overcast the edge so nothing frays. Um, we're not worrying about the top part here, just the long edge. Now before I get into um, all of this stuff with putting the zipper in, I need to go ahead and surge all the way around both of my front pieces just because this stuff does fray. I will transfer the markings after I do that. So, you know, I just very carefully surge around it, trying not to cut off any excess fabric, just maybe a stray thread or two. I'm carefully going around my corners so I have nice sharp corners. So let me go ahead and do that to both of my front pieces and then we'll come back and finish the fly. All right, so I've got those pieces surged and I need to go ahead and mark all of my little pieces. Now here's one thing. Um, I extended it here, but that lowered this pocket dot down here. And obviously I'm not extending my pocket. So this bottom dot I'm going to need to raise up. Um, remember I added an inch and a quarter in here. So this dot, I'm measuring from the center of that dot up an inch and a quarter and that's where the center of my new circle is going to be here for the bottom of my pocket placement. Okay, so I got that one, one up here and I'm just, you know, using my hole punch and a scrap of fairly thick leather to punch all of these out. I am, they don't have it marked, but I'm actually going to punch where the bottom of the pleat line is and the top. And it's odd, they have, this must be a circle for something else in addition to a pleat because it's offset from it. Maybe it's a carrier, belt carrier or something. So I'm going to mark that hole, but also at about a quarter inch down from the edge, I am punching out a circle on the pleat fold line. Okay, so I'm going to do that for each one of these. Mark the bottom of the pleat line and about a quarter inch down on the top of the pleat line. Um, over here at the fly, we got all kinds of things to mark. So there's a circle up here on the fold line for the left side. I think I need to clean this out. When you get too many little pieces of paper shoved in there, it stops cutting correctly. But this stitching line, I'm going to go ahead and do the same that I do on the pleats where I punch a hole about a quarter inch down just so I have a landmark to guide me. Coming down here, there's a large circle at the bottom of my stitching line and a small circle at the bottom of the fold line. Now one other thing I like to do when I'm going to be drawing this is I like to hit a midpoint in this curve right about here. Okay, which is about midpoint of the curve this way. Punching a hole there so that when I'm drawing that stitching line on, I have a place to aim at. And then I draw one more dot once it reaches its final straightaway position, which is going to be, hang on, my little thing is coming unscrewed there. Okay, which is going to be right about there. Okay, so that gives me a few landmarks for when I'm drawing this line on. And I think everything else is just notches. So now that I have those marked, I do have my heat erasable pen that I'm going to be using. Um, these are pleats, so I need to draw those pleat lines on the front, the right side of the fabric. So um, let me just go ahead and get one piece out at a time and lay it right side up. Uh, which would be this way on this side. And this is the right side of my fabric and the right versus left side. This is the right side of my um, pants. And so this is the side that the stitching line gets drawn onto. So I don't need to draw this. Can't even see what I'm talking about here. I don't need to draw this on the other side, just on this side, okay? So let me make sure that this is all kind of placed correctly here. So I'm going to draw the bottom 
middle, straight away, and top here so that when I move it, I can kind of sketch it this way, that way, and then put a ruler here and connect these two lines, if you can see, and draw this line, okay? And that way it's on there, it's all good. I'm gonna do the same thing where I draw my dots for my pleats and then connect those so I have one, two, three, four pleat lines showing up. I need to do my pockets on both sides, clip my notches, and I'll be right back. On the left side, remember I'm drawing this fold line, and this fold line is 3 eighths of an inch in from the edge. So I have my top and bottom mark there, and I'm just putting my little clear ruler over it where I can make sure that my edge is actually at that 3 eighths of an inch mark all the way across, you know, just to keep things tidy here. And then I can connect those two dots to have a nice fold line on that side, okay? And this is my left side, and this is how my pleats are marked uh, when everything is done. I've been thinking about this fabric, how to describe it. It's almost like if an extremely lightweight twill, and I say that because I have these diagonal kind of woven textures here. If an extremely lightweight twill, an extremely lightweight baby corduroy, because of the fuzzy, lovely softness of it, had a baby, and her name was Rayon, okay? That's what this fabric is. So anyhow, what I need to do now is put these two pieces together, right sides together, and we're gonna be dealing with this little seam right here, the little tiny part in the crotch area. Just delete everything I just said. I'm gonna go by what the book says and not what the pattern says, because the pattern says to make this little stitch, according to my book instructions, they have you do that later, and to keep from confusing things, I'm sticking with what the book says. Yeah, I just looked at it before, look it. I just skipped over it. Here's their whole instructions for zipper. Apply fly front zipper to front using right fly facing and left fly. And then they say there's a video on it. I don't like this. I like having my instructions spread out, you know? Especially, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. And if someone was new to this and they saw that, no, I think that, I think that's really frustrating, you know. Don't approve. I voice my opposition. Anyhow. Okay, so the instructions, according to my book, are next I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to put it face down and we're dealing with the left side here. Okay, and I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance here. Um, they have you putting the tape all the way up here, sticking out the edge, so why not? Um, but actually, I want the bottom of my zipper to line up with the bottom of the stitching line, which is right about here. So, because this is going to be in the seam allowance, I'm actually going to put the little stopper on my zipper at about the same level as this dot, okay? And I'm placing it so that the tape of my zipper is equal with the edge, which should be, this should be close to 3 8 7 inch from the coils to the edge, and it is. All right, I don't want to use pins. I am going to go get my tape to secure this in place. Okay, so if you want to see the instructions, here we go. We are um, right here. Okay, and here is a picture for you, and here is another picture for you, okay? So you can refer back to those, because I know I said I would show you, and sorry I did not. Okay, so when you sew this zipper on, this zipper you put upside down. This is my left side, right side up, okay? This is my zipper, upside down, because when it's sewn, it's going to be like that. But I'm going to be layering the um, extension piece over here. So I'm actually going to be putting this tape on both sides of this side of my zipper. 
And this is my very favorite double-sided water-soluble basting tape. Um, it has a paper backing on it, so I'm just going to put it on here. Basically, just past the point where the little metal stopper is right there. Okay, so here it is on this side. Let me turn it over and I'm going to put it on this side also because I can. All right, so now the front side where the little tab is, I'm going to pull the paper off of this side first. Okay, so now I have the sticky exposed here on my right side. I'm going to flip it over, matching up the stopper down here on the bottom of my zipper with where this dot is down there at the bottom or thereabouts. Lining up the edge of my zipper tape with the edge of my fabric or thereabouts. Okay, let me push that down securely. And now that's what that's going to look like on that side. All right, now I need to pull off the tape from the back side of this part of my zipper. Okay, and I'm going to take this little piece that we worked on and the raw edge of it, I am going to place, you know, equal at the top, but with the edges, the length, this, this edge here, making that nice and even all the way down, like so. And there we go, it's in place, okay. So that is what I'm going to need to stitch first. So if I was to open this right now, that's what it would look like. And that looks correct. It's a lot easier to check it before you put your stitching in than after, you know. So what I'm going to need to do is come down here and edge stitch right along this edge here, okay probably with the zipper foot type of thing, or actually I'll probably use just my narrow foot that I can run down. I want to make sure my fabric is out enough away from the coils that nothing is going to get caught, all right? So just stitching along the edge from basically where the edge stopper is here all the way up to the top. Okay, so there's my row of stitching. So what I would suggest is you zip up your zipper, you know, start Technically, you should start at the top, but I started at the bottom and I um, got up as far as I could. When you hit where your tab is, put your needle down, pull your zipper, you know, lift your presser foot with your needle down, pull your zipper tab below where you're working, put your presser foot back, and then that way you can continue all the way up without having to like work around your tab because that's never good. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to the next step. And I was going to mention, if you don't have tape and you're going to be doing this, you're going to need to do this in two different steps. You're going to need to first baste the zipper on to the front in one step, and then you're going to have to sew it. So you actually have to do two rows of stitching, you know, one with it like this and one with it like this. Um, that's why I like to use my tape, you know, it's just a whole lot faster and easier that way. But just be aware that if you're going to skip the tape, you're going to need to do it in two different steps. Okay, so at this point, I need to make a little stitching line from where this uh, notch area is up to this dot, which is the dot at the base of the um, stitching line, the big circle. This point, okay? I want to make sure that I don't have this zipper and this part underneath there because I want that to be able to move freely. So when I'm sewing it, just being aware that the only thing under my needle here are the two layers of pants fabric, not the zipper, not that part. So let me go ahead and make that stitch and that is at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so here is that little bit of stitching so that when I lay my raw edge there and open it up at 5 eighths of an inch, it's going to look like this, okay? That's just folded under at this point. But double check at each step. Um, if it looks wrong at that step, don't go further. Fix what you did, you know? 
So now that this looks good, underneath here that looks good, um, I'm going to go on to my next step which is getting my other little extension piece, this, put on with this side of the zipper. Okay, so I have turned it upside down here and I still have my zipper zipped, but you can see at this point if I have the right front seam allowance kind of folded at 5 8 7 inch and this is laying flat this way, you can tell what part of the zipper needs to be sewn to what part of the right front, okay? And it's going to be this, which is the right side of the zipper, is going to be up against this, which is the right side of the right front, okay? So that's just a way to help you figure that out. I need to go ahead and, you know, once again, put my tape on this side of the zipper, just to start with. Okay, so at this point, just with my tape, I have the right side of my zipper tape stuck to the right side of this seam allowance type area here, okay? So if I show you the right side of my pants, you know, with the left piece under the right, and this fold here, correct, just double checking, does that make sense? Yes, it does, okay? Does my top of my pants look even? Yes, it does. Does this look good down here where this little seam is? Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my next step. And that is, I have my zipper unzipped at this point and I need to add another piece of tape over on this side, which is the wrong side of my zipper attached to my right front piece. Okay, so pulling the backing paper off there, I now need to get this little piece that is interfaced, surged around the edges, okay? And I need to line it up so that the top up here is matched up to the top of this waist level here and the outer edge and I'm just going to push it down so that these edge lines are matching up all the way down. Keep all of this nice and flat down here. Okay, so once again because it's you know easier to double check before you put your stitching in Will this make sense? Now, understanding that this still needs to get folded back here, you know, and attached and all, but if this is here, my left side is here, the underneath part is here, if I was to zip it up, would that make sense on the outside? Yes. On the inside? Yes. Okay. Again, double checking is a fabulous thing at this point. So now I can unzip my zipper. I've got all this just kind of glued together. And what I need to do is come back. I can feel where the ridge of my coils of my zipper is here. I'm just going to get a very narrow foot, a zipper foot, whatever you have, and run a line of stitching up here on this side. Here's my coils on this side, right up against it all the way from the bottom to the top here. All right, so I've got this sewn now. So this is looking at it from the right side. This isn't set yet, okay? But from the right side, if this was pressed over enough so that it covers all of this stitching over here on the wrong side, does that look right? Yes, it does. Can I unzip it? Yes, I can. If I unzip it, do I have a shield behind the zipper on the left side and something that looks like this on the right side? Yes, I do. Great. Now I can go on with my next step. So um, this fold here is going to be an exaggerated fold. It needs to come all the way over so that it covers the stitching line and the little zipper tab. Okay and should be about like so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it in place like this 
and give it a light press just to hold that shape for me. Well, that was probably not the brightest thing in the world because as soon as I did that, it erased my little stitching line. Um, but, you know, I can redraw that. That's not that big of a deal. But now I have this little crease and I, you should have enough of a fold here beyond the zipper that you can safely and easily cover all of this stuff going on here. Okay, and I'm pressing it so that this little facing is on the right side. Okay, so I've got it redrawn and what I have is it's pinned, just pinning this little facing piece here to the front. And I'm going to start up at the top and stitch along this line all the way down around and over to this point, okay? And I'm keeping everything open back here, so I'm just going through this first layer the first time. After this, then I'll fold the left under and reinforce it. Okay, I didn't go all the way to the edge because at a certain point, there's a danger of puckering and everything because of folding it out. So on this first layer, I stopped probably about a quarter inch away. But now that that is in, I'm going to go ahead and zip up my zipper, get everything down here layered correctly. And now with the back part underneath here, okay, I'm going to come back and stitch all the way to the seam line and probably back up a couple times and that's just going to help reinforce the bottom of the zipper. Okay, so coming back here with the same threads just to hold it in place. But this time the difference is going through everything at the same time. Okay? Okay, so the fly is now finished. I can reach in here, pull it all the way down. It's nicely sewn. You know, it's secure. I have it, you know, a lot of reinforcement stitching down here. So I'm happy with that. Um, I actually need to quit for a bit and run into town and take care of some things. So I think this is a good point to take a break. So next time I'm going to put my little book away. Thank you book. But the more that they're doing patterns with this way where they're skipping instructions, um, I recommend getting a reference book of some type. Anyhow, um, I'll be back in a bit. Hey, welcome to the next day here and got our fly in. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the pleats. And there's two pleats on each side. I'm going to take my outermost pleat, fold it there and bring it up to match that line with the in one here. And if I can get my little pin through this fabric, that would be helpful. Okay. And then the same thing with the second pleat, bring the outside one in and match it up with the inside one. And this one I kind of ironed over, so it's a little bit lighter, but I think I can see that. And once I have these pinned in place, I need to come back with my machine and at about a quarter inch uh, seam allowance, I'm just gonna run a little row of stitching over here just to keep these uh, nicely set. It doesn't say that they want you to base these down in place, but you know what, before I actually stitch it, I'm going to give it a quick little press just to try to set the pleats at least from where these dots are all the way up. Just, you know, so that is set there, but I'm not going to be basting those. So, okay. So with that done, see my little stitch line up there, gently pressed, you know, those little marks where my pins are unfortunate, but you know what? They'll come out the more I handle it. It's kind of like a corduroy where when you press on it, things happen, but I'll brush them away. No big deal. The next thing I'm going to work on is this pocket. And this, these pants, they, a lot of times on pants patterns, they'll have the pockets where it's kind of at a little angle right here. But these don't, they are completely inseam, side seam set pockets. So because of that, you're gonna be putting um, the lining piece. Remember we cut two of a lining fabric and two of the regular fabric of the pockets. You're gonna be sewing the lining one to the front pants. And then when you work on the back side of the pants, you'll sew the fabric version onto there. So that's interesting. 
But before I do any of that, I am going to take all of my four pieces, two of each, and go surge around the edges just to keep them from fraying while I'm working on it and while it's being washed because this is a throw in the washing machine kind of pan here. Okay, so um, there are two dots on the pocket piece. These dots match up with the two dots that we put here, but they also match up with the very top edge. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of use this top edge point as a guideline when I'm placing my pocket pieces. And like I said, I am placing the um, lining version on first. And I'm going to be putting it to the right side. This is the right side of my pants. Once I get these on, I'm going to be sewing it at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So not the full 5 8 slightly smaller, 3 8 of an inch here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so once your pockets are sewn on, you're going to want to press this seam allowance towards the pocket. So this is the wrong side here. You see there is my seam, pocket is going this way, seam allowance is also going that way, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and pin this whole little front piece up onto my dress form and get my back pant pieces over here. We're gonna start with the little dart that goes on the back. Okay, so um, on the back, pants. There is a welt pocket only on the right side. So you can see in their little pictures here, that's the side that gets the welt. So I need to mark where my dart is and the welt, but only the welt part on the right side. So what I need to do is go ahead, um, because my fabric is so finicky to pressure, I'm going to go ahead and fold my fabric under while I punch these circles out. You know, circles here, here, circles everywhere, the pocket circles, which you cannot see, trust me, they are over here. Um, get all of that punched out and then I'll put the fabric back up and we'll mark them. Okay, so I've got all my holes punched. Now since this is a dart, I need to mark it on the wrong side of my fabric, okay? So I'm just marking the dart. Now, even on the right side, I am not transferring these welt markings over yet. I will do that actually after I have my dart put in. I'll show you at that point. Um, but I'm gonna put down my dart dots. This little waistline one, I think that has to do probably with a belt loop carrier. The pocket ones over here just for funsies because I am going to place my pocket based on this upper edge here. And let me go ahead and flip this over so I can mark the other side. But before I do that, where's my ruler? There it is. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of connect the dots here with my ruler just so I can see very clearly where that stitching line is when I get over to my machine. Okay, so what I did here, I'm gonna do on the other side also. Okay, so I've got my darts marked. And actually before I proceed any farther with this, I'm gonna go ahead and jet over to my serger, serge around these pieces. I'm not serging the top, because that's gonna be in the waistband, but all around the sides and the bottom of both of these pieces. Okay, I've got it surged around, nice and protected. So to make my dart, I'm gonna stick a pin down one dot, bring it back up the second dot and push those together. Come down here at this point where my bottom dot is and pinch that and kind of feel where that nice crease is supposed to be. Then pin in the bottom part here, anchor in this top one, and when I'm sewing it at my machine, I start at the top and I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom. My fabric is thick enough. I feel secure enough on my machine. I am going to put a back stitch at the bottom. You know, you do you. Feel what comfortable level you are. If your fabric's really lightweight, you might wanna just, you know, leave your tails free and tie them off. But for me, on this fabric, back stitching is the thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once I have them set in, they're gonna want you to press the little um, dart over towards the center back, okay? All right, so my dart is in, press towards center back, all is good there. So now this is the right rear, 
if I put my pattern envelope down, I can see this one, it matches up with this one, okay? And I'm looking at the right side of my fabric here. This is the one that has the little welted pocket. So, now I'm getting my pattern piece back over here, and I'm gonna mark where these dots are. So, I'm gonna kinda do this in two steps. The first one is matching up this arm of this leg here of my dart, okay, with the dart that I feel underneath there, and I can mark these two little holes. Then I'm going to kind of, let me stick a pin down here at the bottom to keep that together. Rotate the top here so that I can feel where this dot on this dart leg is matching up with that whole little seam there. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to color in these two. When I remove this, they should be in a straight line. We'll see here. Okay, looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and draw them on here just so I can see everything clearly. It looks like they are half an inch apart. So that will work. Okay, so that is my welted pocket outline. All right, are they gonna send us to another video? No, well that's interesting. Look, they want to send you to a video. I figured out their thing, you know, all I had to do was read it. If you see something in bold print, that's their cue that, oh, we have a video on that. Great, huh? but they don't have a video on putting in a welted pocket, thankfully. So since we can actually see what they're doing here, I'm gonna to try to follow the instructions on here rather than going to my book. But if they didn't, I do have those instructions in my book, so that would be handy. All right, so the first thing I need to do is where I drew this, I need to run a stitching line in that same area, and that's gonna be a reinforcement line and they're going to show you this right here. Okay, and then afterwards we're gonna cut it open. So my first step, go to my machine with, you know, a fairly short stitch length. You know, it doesn't have to be microscopic, but you definitely don't want basting stitches here. Um, go all the way around this rectangle. Okay, I've got my little stitches in here. I gave it a quick press just to erase my marks. But now I'm gonna put some more on. Um, at the point half an inch in from the edge, I am putting a little dot, okay? And from that dot, I'm gonna draw diagonal lines going to the corners of my rectangle, like so. And then I'm gonna draw a line to connect those two dots, just to give myself a guide for cutting you know, I appreciate that. Looks like my line is a little high there, so I'm gonna cut it a bit lower than the line I marked, see? But I'm gonna start here in the middle. You know what? I need to get a different pair of scissors. I can get in there easily. I'm gonna use these guys because they are super duper great at cutting in tight little places. Okay. So I'm cutting up until I get to my little dot, half an inch in. I believe that's what they were gonna ask for. Yeah, I think so, okay. And then from that diagonal, I'm going up to, but not through my stitching lines in the corner, okay? So it's gonna be like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other three corners and slice this up to my half inch dot right there. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. I need to get my little uh, piece number five welt piece and put some interfacing on it. I'm gonna be using the same interfacing that I did for the um, other pieces, that lightweight stuff. I only have one of these. Well, I'm supposed to only have one of these cut, but it looks like I have two of them cut. I will be interfacing only one of them and I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to another day. I just wanted to share, it is cool outside. What is today? September 15th. So I'm declaring today first day of the season where I can wear this dress 
love this dress you know I made it last year look for it um, but flannel it is indeed flannel season so happy about that all right I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera down and we're gonna be working on getting our little welt put into our back pocket all right so I've got my little piece interfaced okay and it looks like I cut it slightly short I don't think that that's going to make a huge amount of difference here um, but the first thing they want you to do is fold it in half now these do have circles markings on it but I'm not going to mark those until after I fold it in half and press it or else they will just disappear so with right sides together folding it lengthwise going to put a nice crease in there and I'll be right back okay so now that it is folded and creased. I'm just laying my pattern piece on top with the fold line at the fold. Going to put these little dots here. This dot connects to a stitching line which should match up to, where are you now? This stitching line here. Okay, so the first thing they want you to do is with this folded in half, I'm going to draw some lines. Um, they want you, interesting, interesting, okay, on the bottom here, you're going to go all the way across, but you're going to keep going beyond these dots. Okay, so these are where my dots are, and they want you to stitch 5 eighths of an inch from each edge, okay? So I've drawn in those lines also. So I'm just going to go over to my machine, make stitching along this line, you know, which is beyond these dots, but at the same level as these dots, okay? Okay, so the next step is they want you to take your pocket, which is sliced open here, and where this bottom seam of the um, little stitching outline is, they want you to match this up with where these dots are. So if I line it up here, I can see that actually, sorry about that, my dots are actually about a little more than an eighth of an inch wider, so I'm just going to kind of center it, all right? But what you need to do is put it so that the fold is down, so here's my raw edges, here's the fold, and you're going to line up this seam with where this seam is. So what I'm going to do is, hmm, maybe if I do it this way where I can see my dots. This is my dot, all right? And remember mine was a little bit longer, so I'm just going to move my pin in, you know, about a sixteenth of an inch or so, and stick this pin through. And then stick the tip of the pin through the corner of my stitching down here, so that those two will line up, kind of anchor it in there. Same thing over here. Here's this dot. I'm sticking my pin in just before it. Putting it into the corner of my stitching over here. And anchoring that on. And hopefully that's pretty good. Now I need to, it's kind of tricky because you can't see what you're doing. I need to make sure that this stitching line is lined up with the stitching line underneath it. So at this point I'm just again midpoint somewhere sticking my little pin through the stitching line and the stitching line underneath it uh, just so that those two will kind of line up okay so on this side this is what it looks like this is open okay this is only a quarter inch this is five eighths of an inch so that's why it sticks out a whole lot more now, what do they say to do from here? They say, once we've pinned it, they want you to baste along the stitching line between the small dots. Okay, so I'm just going to do that really quick um, on a needle and thread because I don't feel like doing a tiny little stitch on here. Just between this pin along this stitching line to this pin right here. As I'm basting it on, if I put my pin needle down on this side at the stitching line and turn it over, I want to make sure it's coming back up at the stitching line there. So I'm going to shift it over just a hair so it matches up here and then bring it back up on this side. And that way, you know, I can make sure that everything is lining up right. Okay, so that is basted on. I'm just going to set that aside for a minute and I'm getting piece number six back pocket and piece number seven welt facing out 
Um, I am going to serge around the outside edge of this back pocket because these pants aren't lined and I don't want it to fray. So let me do that really quick and then we'll come back and transfer a whole lot of um, markings. I'm not going to be surging around the welt facing because it's going to have all kinds of stuff done to it and I think it will be okay. Okay, so I've got that surged around. I'm just going to start by punching out all of the little holes on this back pocket piece. So up here at the top, there are two dots um, that are bordering a stitching line. This is a placement line. I'm actually going to put a little hole about a quarter inch in on each side so I can mark that. Um, the fold line is going to be kind of self-explanatory, but I am going to mark it too because why not? And then at the bottom, there are two more dots bordering stitching lines. Okay, so let me go ahead and get all of these transferred over onto the right side, is it? Hmm, it's kind of, I need part of it on the right side and part on the wrong side. I'm going to start with putting it on the right side, um, but I'll keep my piece handy in case I need to, you know, turn it over and uh, add more stitching marks on the other side. So what I'm doing is just drawing my little dots and then once I have them drawn I'll come back with my ruler and connect all of these little dots here. And um, once again my pen does disappear so it's not a huge undertaking to draw lines everywhere but also to erase them easily. So if you're going to do this um, and you're going to get these pens, I love these pens, they just make life so much easier, um, but just double check that they do erase completely on your fabric before you start drawing all over on the right side of your fabric. Usually they do, usually they do, and if they don't they still might erase completely once you run it through the washing machine. That's my thought. Anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to mark, there's only one stitching line on this little welt facing. And again, I am marking it on the right side and connecting these little dots. Now the um, instructions say they want you to finish off this side down here. Okay, so here's my dots, this side down here. Um, they say by turning it under and stitching it, edge stitching it. Uh, let's see, do they give an amount? Press under seam allowance. Well, they say seam allowance. They're not giving us a amount of that seam allowance, so I'm going to assume it's the standard 5 8 inch-ish. So I'm going to go ahead and press this up about 5 8 of an inch here and then edge stitch it across the front. Okay, so here it is. So just straight across the edge to finish that off. Now what I need to do is take this piece and it is showing that we're going to be matching it up to the, I'm guessing it's the bottom, can't see that, the bottom dots here because we have stitching line marked on both top and bottom. So that is what I'm assuming and this is right side up, this is right side up, and so if I just overlay the two these dots should match up and they pretty much do. Um, but I'm going to be just pinning it in place and then using the dots I can get a pin that will go through. Um, okay, let me just pin this in place here. And then what we're going to need to do is stitch through these dots, because these are at 5 8 7 inch, and then also up the edges here at 5 8 7 inch. Okay, so down, over, past the dot line, and then back up here at 5 8 7 inch. Okay. Here we go. This is what we've got right now. Now, this is the bottom, so I need to turn this so this is my right side here against my right side of my pants. Okay, the part that we just did all this stuff to is down here at the bottom. And I am going to clip this little tail right here. Okay, matching up these edges of this pocket piece with this little welt that I did before. 
just going to pin that in place up here and um, it actually it's going to be a little bit trickier because I need to kind of look at it from this side what I need to do is sew from this corner all the way across here to that corner but I've got my pins on the back um, but I'm only sewing between these two dots so these two pins that are out on the side I'm just leaving those in but I have one showing right there so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple other pins in place here so I can see them clearly and then I can pull out this bottom one okay that looks good so I'm just going to stitch over this stitching line from this dot to this dot and after that I'm going to pull out my little basting stitches okay so I've pretty much pulled my stitch my basting stitches out there is a couple underneath the stitching there that I couldn't get but I think it's okay so this is what it looks like on my pocket right side so now what I need to do is tuck this whole thing through the pocket opening all these little flappy parts here shake it out here so right now if I get everything situated right what's it going to look like it looks like that okay so here is a big welt on the top I don't think we're putting a welt I mean the welt is from the bottom but I don't think we're doing one on the top um, so that's good okay so there's an instruction on here that says trim upper edges of welt pocket even with lower pocket opening And I'm not too sure what exactly they mean because in the next pictures I don't see that this is trimmed a whole lot it's set in just a hair but not a whole lot and um, this lower pocket opening is out further so because I'm considering this the lower pocket opening you know I'm guessing trying to figure out their jargon here um, but what I'm going to do actually before I do anything is just press this so that this edge is laying nice and flat and this edge is laying nice and flat. We'll just start there. All right, I have it pressed now. Um, I'm still not too sure exactly what they mean, but I can tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here and just this little over part, I'm pinking it so that it's slightly smaller than the outside edge of the pocket. So I make sure I don't get that bottom part. So it's slightly smaller than the outside edge of the pocket, um, which is surged. Um, and that way this part isn't going to show. I'm hoping that that's what they mean. Um, that would make sense to me because, well, let me finish uh, pinking this and I'll show you. Okay, so this is pink so that those raggedy edges aren't gonna show. Because when I put this up here before, um, those little raggedy edges were peeking out and it made it look not very neat. So now it does. So, you know, that's a thought. Okay, so here's the fold line at the bottom. And what they're going to want us to do is this little flap that's the top part of the pocket opening. You see where the stitching line is there? Okay, they're going to want us to sew it so that this stitching line here matches up with this stitching line here but not catching this bottom part and it just really seems like there's an easier way to do this but we are following their instructions so let me see if I can get this pinned on here you have to kind of fold this little welt that we just did down here you have to fold it down and out of the way in order to be able to get these corners to match up you know but I think I've got it and at this point I'm just going to go ahead to my machine and try to stitch it very carefully from this corner over here hoping for the best we'll see how it goes okay got that done now when you're getting everything situated um, these little corners you know we cut the welt like at an angle there you need to make sure that you have these little triangle pieces pulled out so that they are nicely sticking out the sides here and 
I have not sewed the sides of my pocket together yet, but after I sewed it, I did go over to my ironing board and pressed it carefully. And this is what it looks like. I think it, I think it's very doable. I need to reinforce these little edges over here because right now there's nothing that's attaching that. I want to see if they ask you to do that. Ah, they're going to have you do it from the inside. Um, which means what they want you to do is open this up here and very carefully where you see this stitching line, edge stitch straight across. Let me get something to point to straight across right here on top of that stitching line. Okay, so I got that done. There's my little stitches in there. And then while I was at the machine, I went ahead and sewed my pocket at five eighths of an inch up each side. So this is the wrong side. These are the little stitches I just made and the side seams. It's an awful lot of work for a back pocket that I will most likely never use. But you know, sometimes it's good to have it. And honestly, don't we just complain so much about having tiny pockets in pants? So, you know, seize the opportunity to put big pockets in, which is what we're doing. So, um, this part is pretty much done except for now there's the big side pocket which we're going to be attaching to this back piece just like we did the front part. So I've got my little pocket pieces here. Make sure you put your pocket on the outside edge and not the crotch because that would be unfortunate. Okay so I need to make sure I get the pocket, the right pocket for this side. I'm putting them right sides together. You remember when I line it up at the top here, that's the right placement. So I'm just going to get this matched up here. So this seam at 3 8 of an inch. So this is a smaller seam allowance here. And I'll do the same thing to my other back side of my pants, which does not have a welt pocket and get that placed up and then I'll be right back. All right, so I just have, this is obviously my back with my back pocket pinned to the appropriate side of my front. And I wanted to point out a couple things. First of all, it's important to make sure that this seam line matches up over here with the seam line over there. It was set in at a smaller seam allowance and we're gonna be sewing outside of it, but you just wanna make sure that that is all lined up. Also, um, my pocket pieces for my fabric and my lining do not exactly match up. But you know what? I'm not going to care about that. I'm just going to sew so that I catch both of them, you know? But this is going to be on the inside. Sometimes when you cut a pocket piece and you serge it, and I need to serge it so it won't fray, you know? But when you do that, it might stretch something. They might have been slightly different when I cut them. You know, things happen that's going to be okay. And the other thing I was going to point out is my back piece is about half an inch shorter than my front piece. Again, when I hem it, that's going to get taken care of. So I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to take my pocket piece and what I need to mark are where these two dots are. Okay. I just kind of joined it lining up the tops when I did that and everything, but it's these two dots I need for my stitching. So I'm just going to put a little mark here where this one is and a little mark here. It's more for the height that I'm marking this right now. Um, and so this is where my top dot is. I'm just going to bring it out about a quarter inch from this stitching line because remember this, oh this pin isn't wanting to work, this stitching line was at three eighths. Five eighths is my regular stitching line. So just to make everything good, I'm going to go ahead and draw that line at that five eighths of an inch from that dot to the top. Okay. Now here's the bottom dot. I'm going to move it over about a quarter inch from that stitching line and draw that from this point down to, well, at least below where the pocket is. Okay. So we can see that. When I sew this, and it's going to show, I think, on the instructions. Yes, it does show it. Okay. So we're going to make this in a few different steps here. Um, from this point, I need to sew this little 
part here as one piece of stitching, okay? You know, back stitch and everything to lock that in. Then up here at 5 8 7 inch or whatever you need to be able to sew both of your pieces together, go all the way around the pocket, you know, and coming back up at that 5 8 7 inch mark to where this line is. And that's why I drew that line because I don't want to overshoot it. From here, you can either then turn and go up to this dot and then flip it and head back down or back stitch here and then start a new one here. I'm probably going to do that just for ease of maneuverability, you know. And then from this point, come straight down at 5 8 7 inch all the way down. Okay, so going here, going here, and then going there. And I need to do that on both of my pockets. But again, the main thing is make sure that these stitching lines of the front and the back are both lined up at that point so that you get a nice uh, hidden pocket when you're all done. Okay, so I've got my seam put in and I need to press this now. So everything below the pocket is gonna get pressed open. And, but at the pocket, and above, I need it to get pressed towards the front. So just below the pocket, I'm just going to take a little clip in the back seam allowance. You know, I'm clipping up to about an eighth of an inch away from the seam line. I don't want to go all the way up to it because we don't need any trouble there. So I'm just going to start down here. Oh dear, I turned off my iron. Well, pretend my iron is on. And from here down, I'm going to press that open. And from this point up, I want to make sure that I have these seam lines that I just put in laying nice and flat and press this whole pocket forward. Okay, so I want you to see from the outside, of course, this is my back, this is my front, and in the pocket, you know, that's just a crease from the iron, but the seam line is set in so that's going to be kind of hidden. It's going to lay nice and flat. That is all good. Now up here at the top, what I'm going to do is just where this pocket is now going towards the front is just baste this to the front um, at about a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just going to do that on the sewing machine on both sides just to keep those fronts aiming the direction that I want them to. So now that that is done, I need to sew the inseam. So I'm just going to push one of those legs out of the way. Remember, we have like a few inches that has not been stitched up here in the crotch line already. So I can just fold. This is my front. This is my back. That is an extra thread. Um, matching these up, stitching them at 5 8 7 inch. And then we will be pressing this seam allowance open. I'm going to do that for both of my legs. So I've got my inseam put in and when I'm ironing it, I am just sticking um, my seam roll inside of my pant leg, you know, and moving it up so that I don't crease anything that I don't want creased. It makes it nice and easy to press open the inside all the way up just like that. Okay, so now to go ahead and sew the rest of that crotch seam, I need to take one of my pant legs and turn it right side out and stick that one inside the inside out pants leg. Okay, let me go ahead and shake these together so that they're somewhat matching here. Um, putting the very center bottom seam, I'm going to pin that together and up here at the very top putting these together. All right, let me go shake this out really quick. Shaky, 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 just so everything is laying better. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is match up from the top back here, sew it out 5, 8, 7 inch, all the way over and matching up where this seam ended over there, you know, overlapping it a little bit. Let's see if they tell you how to reinforce it. Mm, it looks like they just have you sewing a single seam, but but I am going to sew it twice. So I'm going to sew it at 5 8 7 inch and then come back about an eighth of an inch in at about a half inch seam allowance and do it again, especially in that crotch area because we don't want anything to bust by accident. Look, they did it again. 
They don't show you a reinforced seam, but they say reinforced seam in bold print, which means go and look at one of their, I almost said a bad word, one of their videos to see what they mean by reinforced. How hard would it be just to show a reinforced line? But I digress. Okay, let me go ahead and pull this out. If you can see, I've got my two rows of stitching there. Um, I'm not actually going to be pressing this open at this point um, all the way down around the bottom. I will at the very center back. But what I'm gonna do is just make some clips about a quarter inch deep, just a few at the point where there's the most curve down here at the bottom, okay? And I'm just gonna leave it like that. Those clips are gonna be good so that this can flex enough. Up here, once I turn it all right side out, I did double stitch it, but I can still pretty much open it up and press it flat-ish. You know, it's just gonna be offset by just a hair and that's okay. Okay, let me tip you a bit. So at this point, this is the front of my pants with their forward-facing pleats, which is interesting. Usually, it, I remember pleats going the opposite direction, but you know, that's what they want, so that's what they get. Um, I have my hidden side pocket, my back here. That's what it looks like right now. I need to set this aside for a minute because we need to deal with uh, making the little belt loop carriers. So I'm gonna grab it here. We have one big rectangle and I need to fuse interfacing to the back of this. I'm just gonna use my same lightweight stuff for this. When I get to the waistband, I'll use heavier things, but for the little loops, to me, I don't want them stiff. I just want it enough that it's gonna hold there shape, you know, so the lightweight interfacing is fine. All right, so now that this has interfacing, I'm gonna fold it in half, right sides together lengthwise, pretty much. It looks like my cutting is not terribly straight. Stitch this, they just say stitching it, so I'm assuming it is at five eighths of an inch because they don't have any markings on their piece here. So at five eighths of an inch, run a, a line all the way down. Okay, I'm gonna need to flip this right side out to make my life easier. I'm gonna come in here with my pinking shears and trim my seam allowance about halfway down so it's not quite so bulky in there. Using my lobster claw turner, I'm gonna slide it over, leaving myself about a quarter inch at the end to tip over the edge and then I can work it back over the getting it started is the hardest part sometimes come on buddy there we go and then just slide it all the way over so that it's turned right side out okay once that is done, I can just pull it and I need to iron this. It looks like they want you to iron it with the seam in the middle. So it's going to look kind of like this when I press it so that that seam line is like that. Okay, so it's pressed and now I'm gonna run a row of top stitching or edge stitching, I should say, down each side at about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch in just to hold that nice Okay, I wanted to show you that I am using Pearl today. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. And um, for my edge stitching, I haven't shown this in a while. It's an edge stitch foot. And um, this one is set for a 16th of an inch. And she's lovely because she uses the high shank feet. But what the um, edge stitch feet have is this little blade that is just a little spring-loaded blade you know it's not gonna hurt you or anything but it is set at a sixteenth of an inch so when I run my fabric through um, I can just use that blade as the guide for the edge so Not that it's necessary, it is completely unnecessary, but it's fun, and if you like feet, like I like feet, it does really help get a nice, nice straight edge on there. So that's what I'm using. Okay, so I'm back over here at the table, and the instructions say to cut this into three 
sections three and a half inches long. I don't have enough room for that. So let me just measure if I didn't sew it and everything. That's one, two, three. Huh. Yeah, the way that they have this, this pattern piece is exactly, exactly uh, three and a half inches. But when you interface things, it adjusts. When you sew things, it adjusts. When you edge stitch things, it adjusts. So mine now, as you can see, it's about maybe a quarter inch shorter than that. But I'm looking at their pictures on their instructions and it looks like their belt loops are going to be a little large. So I'm making mine shorter than three and a half. I'm making mine closer to three and an eighth or three and a quarter, I think. I think I can fit three, three and a quarter inch belt loops out of this. And we're just going to make that work because the other is not going to happen. Usually on belt loops, they give you a little bit extra, you know, but not this time, I guess. Okay, so now on for this waistband and I'm going to be doing mine somewhat differently than what they are going to tell you to do theirs. What they are going to ask is that you, you have basically um, enough to make an entire outer waistband, an entire inner waistband. Okay, so like there's four of these back pieces. And what they want you to do is interface enough to do a complete waistband, then sew them together, and then put the other ones together. But um, I, I am going to be using a heavier waistband interfacing, and I don't want a whole bunch of bulk in my waistband. That's a pet peeve of mine when with home sewn things having chunky, chunky waistbands. So because of that, I don't want to put interfacing in my seam allowances. Okay. Now, if I measure between at the center point of the dot down there and down here is five, eight, seven inch up there is five, eight, seven inch. So I know the exposed area of my waistband is going to be two inches. And I have some waistband interfacing that is two inches wide. Okay, in this part, I'm just going to cut it apart at the little perforations here. Um, and it's going to be enough to hold it steady. So let me go ahead and put it together the way that I want to, because, you know, if they are playing fast and loose with their instructions, so can I. So first of all, um, these are... I believe just a straight rectangle. Yes, they are. They're not tapered at all or anything. So what I need to do is put them right sides together I'm using my piece number 12, my back piece first. And I'm going to sew my two different sections at the same time. Okay. So I'm going to sew the center back of both my waistband. We'll call one waistband and call one waistband facing. Sew that first and press those seam allowances open. Okay, so now I am going to attach my left front waistband. Now here's the key. Since I'm doing both of these at the same time and one is going to be on the inside, um, I have my right front and my left front. Well, they have them both about the same length. They just have markings a little different. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is sew my left front waistband piece to this side of this one, which I'll call, you know, waistband, whatever. And then to this side of this one. Okay. And I'm just pinning them and doing it one at a time so that I can keep everything straight. Now, I am going to put a little letter L, if my pen will show up, L for left and L for left on this one, so that when I get it all done, I'll be able to tell easily which is which. So again, I'm going to go ahead and put 5 eighths of an inch and then press these open. I'm going to do the same thing with my right front when I'm done. So put one here, one here, put a letter R, 
press those seam allowances open. Okay, so at this point on the instruction sheet, they have this layout, okay, where you're looking at the wrong side of a waistband. This is the one that has interfacing and it has piece 11, which is the left on the right side, piece 10, which is the right on the left side, you know. So that is this one for me. It has a L on the right, on the left side, and R. Well, you know what I mean. Um, so I'm just going to take my waistband interfacing and slice it down the middle. Usually, if you're doing a waistband that's just a fold over kind of things, I use this hole. And where the perforations are, that's the stitching line or the fold line, and it works really well. But, you know, I'm going to do it this way. And if I put on one row of interfacing, and because this isn't terribly heavy weight, it's like a medium weight, if it feels like it's not sturdy enough, I can add the second one. So I'm just going to snip these off and iron them on. And once I get this bottom perforation taken off, I'm just going to center it in here. Um, so I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance on the top and on the bottom and iron it onto place over all of these pressed open seam allowances. Alrighty, so it's actually been a couple days since you last saw me. Um, lots of things going on and honestly today I just felt lazy. It was a bake an entire batch of cinnamon rolls and just be lazy kind of Sunday here today. So that was good. You need that sometimes. But I wanted to come upstairs and see if I can get more of this waistband put on. So I'm trying to be careful to match my notches. There's a notch in each front piece and I just drew it on instead of clipping it. Okay, and matching that up, matching, there's a couple notches in the back. But more than that, I want to match where the seams are. Um, the little side seam here, I'm matching with the side seam there. Center back has a seam, same and same, okay? I just took a peek and I'm glad I did before I finish pinning all of this on. I need to get my little carriers placed on. Now there's only three of them. There's one on each side of the front and then there's one in the back and it goes at the very center back. So right back here between the um, pants part and the waistband part, I'm going to stick a little carrier in and I want to stick it in so the seam is visible this way so that that way when it's put up correctly, the seam will be hidden on the inside. So I'm going to layer that in here. And on the front pieces, there's a little dot. And where that dot is, you know what, let me get a clip here because this is getting a little thick. But where that dot is on the front, um, up by the pleats, that's where you're going to layer the other two little carrier pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and stick those up there real quick. Okay, now that I have it all like half pinned and half clipped up here with my little carrier tabs inserted, I'm going to go ahead and sew this on at 5 8 7 inch um, all the way around the top. Okay, I am not too sure what has gone on here since I was last in here sewing, but look, my tension is totally screwed up, so I'm going to need to restitch this seam, which is okay because this little seam allowance got bent over. You know, it's not the end of the world, but since I'm going to restitch it anyway, I'm going to fix that. Um, but at this point, what you really want to do is make sure that when you zip up, your pants that this line is going to match up here okay if like this was way up here or way down there or something that could be a problem so before you go any further it's a lot easier just to you know re-angle this seam line or that seam line or something so that this point here is going to match up um, then later so double check that and double check that the carriers are right. It looks like they're kind of centered over where this pleat fold is there. So anyway, I'm going to go back to my machine, figure out what in the world has happened with the tension, restitch this seam, and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, so that is on now. And what I need to do is work on the facing. Now on this 
piece here, I have it marked somewhere here, my letter L, so I know this is my left piece. Okay, so I'm going to find my facing piece that is also a letter L for left. And I'm just putting it up here so that I know that I know that I know this upper part here is the part that gets sewn and this lower part is the part that gets turned under. I'm just going to put a little clip right there just to hold it in place. And that is because the next step that they want you to do is trim is sorry, turn this piece up five eighths of an inch and then trim it off. And I usually don't do that, but for some reason I feel like doing it this time. So this way I have my little sheet of making sure that I am folding up the right part. I'm going to go over to my my ironing board, get this whole bottom edge pressed up, five eighths of an inch. A little uh, way that you can mark your fabric so that you can make sure that you're only turning it under five eighths of an inch easily is uh, what I'm doing is I am putting a line at an inch and a quarter, okay, all the way across here. And that is because an inch and a quarter is twice five, and five eighths. So if I fold up this bottom edge so that it just lines up with where that line is, which is easy to do with uh, your iron here. Yes, I do have it turned on for a second there. I thought my iron was not turned on. Then I can just turn it up and press it as I go and it's 100% accurate all the way straight across. And they do want you to trim this down to about 3 eighths of an inch. What I'm going to do is just use my pinking shears over here and take off about half of that seam allowance like so. So then when it's folded under it just looks like that. Okay so I'm looking at the next step and they want you to sew it all the way around the top and I was thinking that they were going to have you put these carrier loops up in there but they don't want you to yet. At this point they just have these little carrier loops still hanging down even after you get the top seam done. So, you know, that's fine. We can go with that. So what I'm going to do is push my little loop down and match up my edges and my top. My bottom folded edge should line up to where this one is here at that 5 eighths of an inch mark. So let me just go ahead and get all of these pinned together first and it looks like, let me grab that instruction again real quick here. It's going to be a simple where we sew up all the way around and then back down. Okay, so once I again make sure I match up all of my seam allowances and everything all the way around, sewing up, over, and then back down on the opposite side at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so at this point they're telling me to cut the corners off and flip the whole thing right side out and then top stitch it. Um, I'm going to do something slightly different, you know, because it's me. At the very top here, I'm going to open it up instead of just top stitching the top, I'm going to understitch it, which means as I open it, as far back as I can get my presser foot, which is probably right about here, I'm going to do a row of understitching on the facing side, you know, about a sixteenth of an inch in or an eighth of an inch or whatever, here on top of all of these seam allowances. Okay, so I'm going to start here, go all the way across to as far as I can on this side, which is probably going to be, you know, right about here, and then I'll stop and that's going to really help my top edge here. Okay, so that is my line of understitching and that's going to help me now when I fold it under to really, really help get me a clean edge. This looks like a whole lot of stuff right here. I'm just going to trim that down a little bit. Listen to my dogs barking. My little misty dog is settling in nicely. For anyone who is interested out there, she's doing very well, becoming very dog-ish. Takes a little while for the little rescues to come out of their shell, but she's doing fabulous. Okay, 
So now with this top turned, my little corner pressed out and everything, I'm just going to go ahead and pin it down here along this bottom edge so that the folded edge of my facing just covers this stitching line here um, like that. And I am actually going to whip stitch this down by hand. Um, so let me go ahead and get this folded and pinned and then whip stitched across here and I will be back later. I already unplugged my microphone, but I want to show you, I'm going to be pinking the um, seam allowances of these belt loop carriers just because that's a whole lot of bulk in there. And I could tell when I was uh, folding these down that that could be a problem, you know. So I'm just tr trimming those out, those three places um, on the back and the two in the fronts. Okay, welcome back. So last night I got my little waistband slip stitched on and I had decided that I am going to wear these pants to Pumpkin Festival. So I need to hurry up and get them done because that is this weekend. Uh, I will tell you more about Pumpkin Festival in a minute if you've never been to a small town festival. Oh my goodness. Um, but what I need to do right now and we're almost done is put a little hook right here. Whoops like here, one of these regular little slidey hooks, and hem the pants. Now the bottoms, remember I shortened them when I was cutting out the pattern, and I did try them on just now, and I have been eating cinnamon rolls like crazy the last two days, which is terrible because the waist does fit, but oh wow, snugger than I was hoping. Um, I was hoping for a little bit of ease, but nope, nope, I'm going to have to cut back on my cinnamon roll intake. Um, but I am going to be hemming the bottom of these pants by hand also, just because the fabric is so loose and drapey, I don't want a line of machine stitching. So I'm not going to show you that, but basically I'm just going to, well, I guess I am going to show you, turn up the edge and then turn it under about an inch and just uh, do a needle and thread invisible stitch all the way around there and press those. So that's going to be pretty easy. So let me go ahead and get this hook placed. I forgot to mention last night while I was, um, when I got done hemming these, what I did is I just turned under the top of the little carriers and did just a little pick stitch, back stitch deal by hand here. So you can kind of see the little indentations, but it's not really obvious. It's basically a back stitch, you know, with needle and thread where you only catch, you know, a couple threads as you go on the top. So that is what I did just to anchor that down and have my little belt loops on nicely. So for the hook, I have a big hook and the little um, catcher slide thing. I can't remember the name offhand. So the hook part is going to go up here and I'm going to place it so that the edge of the hook is probably about a quarter inch in from the edge like that and centering it in here and I'm going to be stitching it. You know all three little tabs plus I'm going to put one up here to loop it around and that's going to be sewing it into the um, seam allowance layer underneath here so that shouldn't show up from the front. You want to do this you know with a needle and thread so that it's not showing up on the front but that you get a good enough bite into your seam allowances and things that it's going to hold its its place really well. Um, but about Pumpkin Festival, it's the annual deal. If you want to look it up it's in Barnesville, Ohio and it looks like I got my thread caught around there. That's not good flick it up here. Okay. And um, we have the Ohio's biggest pumpkins every year and you see a whole parade of you know farmers with flatbed trucks with their massive pumpkins and these are usually a couple a couple thousand pounds. Um, about two thousand pounds usually is around the winter. Um, some years more, some years less. 
but they're massive, they're huge, and you don't know the competitive nature of festival pumpkin growing until you see this happening. But anyway, there is a pumpkin weigh-in, there is a pumpkin parade, there's the pumpkin festival, there is all things pumpkin to eat, you know, and then there's always the walking around, looking at everybody's pumpkin-themed decoration in their house and storefront windows. And of course the traveling, the traveling carnival rides, which are always a little bit sketchy in my opinion. And uh, yeah, yeah, festival time. So that is getting started. So there's gonna be a lot of fall festivals for the next month or so from now until probably beginning of November and then it gets, starts to get cold. So I love fall festival season. Um, I will keep you updated where I go. But um, the Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio Sewing Expo is also coming up in October. And I will be there on probably the Friday and Saturday. So if anyone wants to come, um, when it gets closer to those days, I'll put out a little post explaining where I am if you wanna meet up with me. So there's the hook. Okay, so now I need to place the little slider. So if I get this pulled over, and I want this hook to bear the brunt of the opening here, okay? So I'm pulling it over enough that the top of my tapes are matching up, okay? And pulling it all the way over here, and where the edge of, I can't see that, Okay, where the edge of this little hook is, that's where I'm wanting to put my eye. It's not really an eye, it's a flat eye. It's like a capital letter I, I guess. So I'm just drawing a line right there and a little top and bottom bar so I have its placement. So now I can place my little bar right on top of there and go ahead and stitch that on by hand also. Uh, once I ironed it, I actually decided not to turn the edge under just because I felt like it was going to cause a crease. So I am just hemming it with the surged edge, just kind of doing a little catch stitch kind of thing here where I come up above my little surging and pick just a thread or so. And then come down here under my surging and just under the fabric part catching about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Just going up and down along the way, pulling out my pins and it actually goes pretty fast. So I'm almost done with this and I've just been mulling over this whole idea of not putting all of the instructions on paper and leaving the hardest parts online. And I'm just not happy about that because you know, a lot of us keep patterns a long time. I have some patterns um, I think my, my oldest ones are from like the late 1940s. And what, are they gonna keep a online presence guaranteed to be up forever for people that are gonna keep the patterns, you know, that are coming out today 40 years from now or something? I don't know. It's just, it just doesn't seem right. I think that if there's a lot of times when there's an issue, like putting in a fly, say, which is a very complex thing, that I can understand them having a video, but I would say have the video and the diagram printed, you know? Have an either or, not a one or the other, if they must have the video. You know what I mean? Because it just, it seems like it's like a halfway step between that ditto thing that they were really pushing that I think kind of turned out to be a disaster financially for them because I don't know anyone who's buying them. I've asked at my local Joann's and they don't know anyone who's actually bought them. I, if any of you have actually bought it, you know, chime in. But they spent a boatload of money on that thinking that, oh, okay, you know, doing it strictly digital is gonna be the way to go. And I think that they're messing up because Sewing is a very hands-on craft, you know? It's, it's getting back to feeling it and reading it and all of that kind of stuff. And, and yeah, you're watching a video right now, so definitely videos have a part in it, but you need to be able to, 
to have the hard format also. I don't know. Maybe I'm just rambling, but maybe I'll have to give my two cents somewhere on a customer support number or something. I'm not sure that that would even do any good, but you know, it's worth a try. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they are done. I got to tell you a couple things with the fit. One is, wow, I need to lay off the cinnamon rolls. High waisted does work better for my body shape. It just does, you know, because of my proportions. Um, the 16 is good for my waist. However, if I was to do this again, even though I have enough ease in my hips, Technically, my hip size is bigger than a size 16. And it's kind of throwing off the way the pleats are laying, you know, because it's like larger here. Um, I think that as I wash it, the pleats will just adjust and lay, you know, how they're supposed to and everything. It's not a huge deal, but I notice it. But it's comfortable. The legs are wide enough that you know they're not going to bind up when you're walking or anything like that. The bottoms are are wide enough that you know they're kind of fun, but they're not extreme bell bottoms or anything like that. So all in all, it's been an adventure. Um, hope you got something out of it. The whole deal with the fly, my version, and you saw my version using the uh, basting tape and just doing it all at one time instead of several bastings, you know. Um, that's just my version. I didn't even look at their little helpful videos. I think I'm, I'm just being stubborn that way, but I didn't even look at it, so they probably show you a totally different way to put in a fly. Um, but there you go. So I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Life pleases me as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.